Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and welcome to part two and the final chapter of the detail on my own 30-year-old work van. In part one, we went through the wash and decontamination process, as well as the full interior. And in this chapter, I'm going to take you through the preparation, protection, and finishing stages. Now, just before moving the van into the coating room, I gave it a quick air blow with the MetroVac blower to remove any dust. And I'm now performing an IPA panel wipe to further remove any detergent or chemical residue, streaks, fingerprints, or water spots left over from the decon stage, as I don't want any of that contamination interfering with this protection stage. As you saw in part one, this whole van detail was a little different, focused around working with limited time, cost, products and limited aggression, which are all objectives I'm going to continue moving on with in this second video. I've given myself a total of 8 hours to complete this entire detail, and as I've already spent 5 hours getting to this stage, that leaves me just 3 hours here to finish the exterior. And I hope you guys continue to enjoy part 2 of this series. My first step after the IPA wipe down was polishing the glass. I'm using my cordless Showmate polisher out of convenience, but honestly guys, you can use any DA, rotary or gear driven polisher you have or even do it by hand. I'm using a Showmate microfiber pad, which incidentally is one of the cheapest microfiber pads on the market, and I'm also using Shell Concepts S20 Black Compound, which at least here in Australia is just about the most affordable, professional quality compound on the market. As far as technique goes, I'm going to firstly prime my microfiber pad, but after that I'll just add a few drops of compound for each new section. I'm going to work larger areas, such as half the windscreen at a time, spread the compound in, set my polisher to top speed and use moderate to heavy pressure and a moderate arm speed, doing about three passes in total. I've discussed numerous times in the past that you don't have to worry about being too aggressive on glass, burning through it or causing haze or holograms, as you do with automotive paint, as glass is a much, much harder and more forgiving material to polish. You also don't have to overthink it when it comes to a compound, as most car paint compounds will do a great job at deep cleaning glass and restoring clarity. So there's definitely an ability to move quicker with less stress or issue when it comes to polishing glass. Now I want to explain that there's several reasons why I want to polish the glass in my van, which primarily are that it does have some water spots and etchings, which I'd like to remove or at least reduce. Secondly, there's also quite a few past glass sealants and coatings, which I also want to remove as I'm planning to add a fresh glass sealant, which you'll see later on. 
And thirdly, it's been a long time since I did polish it. So there's a bit of traffic film build up that once removed should leave the glass looking a little clean and clearer, which is definitely going to add to the overall finished look of the vehicle in the end. Now what I'm not doing is going after any scratches as that requires an insane amount of time, work and aggression and I'm also once again not looking for anything close to perfection, just a great decent result. As such you'll see that I didn't mask the rubber around the glass as I'm not going right up to the glass edge or using smaller polishes to get better correction right up in those glass panel edges. Using smaller polishes and masking around the glass would have added at least an hour to this glass polishing stage. And if I had the time, budget and desire, I would have certainly done it. But that's not the goal or what I wanted to show here in this van series, which as I mentioned is all about a great result in a reasonable time frame. I'll also mention that I'm using a microfiber pad because there's simply no more efficient pad to work with on a DA polisher or even if working by hand. But if I was using a rotary, I'd be using a wool pad as microfiber and rotary polishes really don't mix for several reasons. And I'll also mention that wool pads tend to dust much more than microfiber. So wool can also create a bigger and more time consuming cleanup at the end, which again is an advantage in using microfiber pads in this case. As I mentioned in part one, this original single stage paint is super thin, averaging about 30 microns and even down to the primer in a few areas. So I'm definitely not using any sort of polishing abrasives on the paint and haven't done so for many years. Instead, what I'm gonna be using is CarPro Essence Plus, which is a non-abrasive liquid used to clean, enhance, repair and protect ceramic coatings, but also car paint. I'm using it with the same DA polisher, but this time with the Red Shine Mate foam finishing pad. Now, in complete contrast to the glass polishing technique, I used a much slower machine speed, very little pressure, and a moderate arm speed movement, working an area about six to eight times the size of my pad. I'm also not wiping Essence Plus down after I finish polishing each section but I'm rather going to let it sit on the paint and then come back after I've done the whole vehicle and wipe it all down at the end. The first reason for doing this is that the cleaning agents in Essence Plus will continue to work and improve the result if left to sit on the paint for longer. 
And secondly, the resins in the product also need a bit more time to effectively flash and bond to the paint. And thirdly, Essence Plus tends to be super forgiving to work with. So unlike some other polishes, sealants, or even waxes that may become a little difficult to wipe down if left on too long, you really shouldn't have that issue here, which again allows you to work a little quicker with less stress or problems. So let's talk a little more about CarPro Essence Plus and why I'm using it here. The best way to think about Essence Plus is as a new school cleaner wax. So unlike a true polish or compound that uses abrasives to cut and clean the paint in order to remove defects and restore gloss and clarity, Essence Plus uses cleaning agents or solvents to physically clean the paint and remove things like light oxidation, light water spots and any more stubborn traffic film or stains that you may not be able to remove in a standard wash or decontamination process. And rather than again using fine abrasives to remove things like minor swirls and haze, Essence Plus uses an SiO2 based sealant and polymers to fill in those minor imperfections as well as seal the finish with a protective layer. So overall, just like trying to repair or revive the look of a ceramic coating where you really don't want to use a traditional compound or polish as it's going to compromise the coating, I found that the same can apply to older, thin and sensitive paints that just aren't appropriate or safe to polish with abrasives. Additionally, you can certainly also use Essence Plus to polish lights and gloss plastic trims and I've found it to be quite forgiving if you do get it on other plastics or rubbers as it doesn't tend to usually stain them and seems to wipe off without too much drama unlike most true compounds and polishes which again saves time in not having to mask the vehicle or deal with time consuming product removal. Lastly, although Essence Plus does leave a protective sealant behind, my advice would be to top it with a standalone sealant such as CarPro Reload or really just your favorite wax or sealant if you do want some longer lasting protection. Now make sure you give the resins in Essence Plus at least a few hours to set and harden before you top it with anything or if you're limited with time, you can just do what I'm going to do here and just add a top layer sealant in a week or so after the next maintenance wash. But I hope you guys will see at the end that although you're always going to be limited as far as defect removal goes, if you can't polish a vehicle with a true compound, this is perhaps the next best thing as it can still most definitely mask defects whilst adding a great amount of gloss and clarity to the finish. Next up was dressing the plastic and rubber trims. In keeping with trying to limit time, products and cost, I also used CarPro Pearl to dress and add a little protection to those trims. In part 1, you saw me use Pearl at a 1-2 to two dilution for the interior and now I'm going to use it neat for the exterior trims and also use it to dress the tyres later on. So it can be a single dressing used to address multiple areas in keeping with simplifying things. Now you can certainly also use pearl diluted here if you want to limit or reduce the potential gloss. But as I mentioned in part 1, I actually like a little gloss on my van's trims, as I think it works well with this vehicle, whereas on some other vehicles I really don't like it. 
Now just as he saw me level the dressing down in the interior after working it in and letting it sit for a while, I'll be doing the same here to also help knock back the gloss a little to more of a subtle shine rather than a more obvious one, which again is a personal thing that I prefer on my van's trims and also on the tires. And with the tires, it'll also stop any tire sling, which is an obvious added bonus in wiping the dressing down with a cloth. Something I wanted to bring up here is car trims. The thing is that both interior and exterior car trims can vary immensely. There's so many different types of plastics, vinyls, rubbers and leather that have so many diverse finishes, hardnesses, sensitivity pores and textures that massively affects how a dressing looks and performs on them. Now we know this variance is true when it comes to paint correction, which is why we have so many different compounds and pads to address such different and diverse paints, but I don't think we really appreciate this when it comes to car trims. Now what I'm trying to get at is that even just on my van, pearl looks different depending on which trim I'm applying it to. Sometimes it's a little more glossy, other times it's a bit more matte, and also depending on the trim, it will last quite a while on some, yet not so long on others. And the exact same thing can be said for almost any other dressing on the market. Its looks and performance largely depends on the specific trim it's applied to. In the end, this is a large part of why we have so many conflicting opinions and reviews of not only trim dressings, but all detailing products in general. Now it's not the only reason, as obviously there are other factors, such as user error and varying levels of preparation, application and environmental factors at play. Not to mention that sometimes there are disingenuous motives to push certain products on us, but that's certainly not unique to the detailing industry. I understand that it's sometimes hard and frustrating to get the right information with so much bad information out there all mixed in. And just to go a little off topic here, I wanted to touch on this whole online information and censorship issue, as let's be real, this is how we research, consume and evaluate the vast majority of information today, whether it be researching a detailing product, buying a new car or trying to seek financial or even medical advice. I'm not one with the belief that we should censor any voices or opinions, even though some information is misleading or simply wrong. You start to get into some pretty tricky terrain when you go down that path, as I'm sure many of you have seen in the past year or two with current events. I mean, who are you or anybody to decide for us all what we can or can't say, or what information we can or can't see? And do you really want to give that power to any person or organisation? I'm telling you right now, it won't end well, it never does. So then, how do you find the right advice when you're searching for something as simple as a new detailing product or trying to find a better method to apply it? Use your own judgment guys and don't underestimate your ability to see through misinformation and identify the good stuff along the way. I guarantee that as you get older and hopefully a little wiser, your BS detector will get better as the fire in your belly settles down and proper thought and reason starts to take hold of your judgments. I'll share a quote a subscriber posted on my last video, which was that a lie can take care of the present but it has no future. I love that because all lies have an expiry date and anything predicated on a lie will eventually crumble, while the truth is embedded in our very being and it always finds a way to come to light in one way or another. There's a reason our heart skips a beat when we lie, because we know there's something wrong with it that's connected to our very core. Now, if only we could mandate that all politicians are hooked up to lie detectors when they publicly speak, I think we'd be well on the way to a better world and a more honest conversation. I'm not sure how I got here from talking about car dressings, but there you go, I somehow made that leap.
The last step in this detail was adding some protection and a hydrophobic finish toward the glass in which I used NV Glass Light. Now I do believe that Glass Light is the latest release from MV Car Care coming out just a few months ago. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's basically a lighter version of their full strength glass coating. Now as far as application goes, this has got to be one of the easiest sealants you'll ever apply. You can spray it directly on the glass or just onto a microfiber cloth, spread it over a section of the glass in a nice and even manner, and then use a second cloth to buff off any streaks. So in reality, it's just like applying any quick detailer to the paint and just as quick as easy, if not more so. I do believe the primary reason for glass light was to create a maintenance product or topper for the full strength MB glass, which I've also tested it as, as well as over some other glass coatings and it seems to work quite well. But I've also used it on its own as I'm using it here as a standalone glass sealant. What I would firstly say about glass light is that it just simply doesn't get any easier than this to apply any glass sealant and I can't imagine anyone would have any issues with its application as it's just that easy. It also definitely leaves a slicker finish than the full strength NV glass and it can also be used to clean up some minor dust streaks or fingerprints on exterior glass a bit like a quick detailer on car paint so it has some minor cleaning abilities. As far as durability goes, it's really not a glass coating or sealant that's going to last for many months or years. I'd say a good 6 weeks to 3 months, depending on the circumstance, is about right in my experience with it so far. And that also goes for whether it's applied to uncoated or coated glass in general. I really tried to do a slightly different detail with this video, which I hope you enjoyed. And between you and me, we may see a few more of these jobs down the track. I've worked in and performed all levels of detailing, from car washes to dealerships to working from home, mobile detailing and now working in a high-end, low-volume shop. And I want you guys to understand that I've really enjoyed all these different levels of work and found so much valuable experience in each and every one of them. But I also want you to understand that no customer comes to me these days and asks for budget-friendly or a reasonable detailing job. It's higher end work and results that they're after, and that's purely based on my current business model and reputation, which has got absolutely nothing to do with it being better or worse than any other level or subsection of detailing, but rather just an individual choice and progression for me personally. I'll tell you right now that I really dislike detailers or enthusiasts turning up their nose and more budget friendly detailing if the person is doing their best given the circumstance. But I also equally dislike detailers or enthusiasts that try to discredit high-end work or its value, especially when the person is pouring their heart and soul into that car and job. Let me ask you, do you really want to live in a world where you don't get to have those options? Where there's just one choice or level of work if you want to do a detail or have your car detailed? You don't have to discredit others to justify what you do and others don't have to discredit you to justify what they do because there's value in all the work each of us provide for ourselves no matter its level or target audience. It's simple guys, if the value wasn't there, the work wouldn't exist. All I'm saying is that it's great to have these options and pursue what works best for you and we're not all the same nor are our customers or goals and I wouldn't have it any other way. So there you go guys, a long overdue 8 hour detail on my old detailing work van just about complete. We'll see the finished results very shortly, but at least for me, I was really happy with the outcome with all things considered. Though I wasn't too happy with the weather when I had to drive off, which started with a little rain and then turned into a pretty decent downfall that then turned into some horrific storms. But luckily I was safely home before the worst of them hit. And trust me guys, after seeing all the torn down trees, power, phone and internet down for days on end, a slightly dirty van on the drive home was the least of my concerns. I love detailing and take pride in my work, but there's a lot of other things that are far more important. If you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad which I'll have a link to in the description box. And thank you everyone for the support so far, it's most greatly appreciated.
As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. It's been a few months, I think we're so Since we decided to let things go Been hard on my heart, cause I second guess Every decision, I guess I regret Not giving it more time To see if it was all just in my mind Maybe I was wrong Maybe it was meant to be you all the long Maybe I was so afraid of being strong That I held on to my weakness for too long Maybe I was wrong Catching up with old But I think about them In a different way Cause you're not who I'm Telling them about They ask you fine With or without Yeah, I just want to be sure That I don't want you anymore Maybe I was wrong Maybe it was meant to be you all along Maybe I was so afraid of being strong That I held on to my weakness for too long Maybe I was Maybe it was meant to be you all along